It's def definitely changed colour, hasn't it? It's not clear, it's yellowish. Yeah, mm -hmm. So apparently it took about 20 hours to uh, change this from the clear to this uh, uh, side of a yellowy colour, it's a yellowy green I guess. And this one is? This one is silver. Silver, okay. This is iron. Iron. Okay. You're going to see iron. You should see iron. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Yeah, well, yeah, I don't know. Mm. What would you say? Mm. It, does, it does look a little different to those, isn't it? Mm. What would you say, George? Would you say there's a null or...? It's pretty close to a null, I'd say. On, the ca on this camera, it looks like a null. <laughs> it is slightly. It's definitely darker than that one. Yeah. I, I think. I think you might have an interesting result here. <laughs> yeah. And 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 the reason is, and this is quite common, uh, silver has been found to be produced from palladium. So uh, I'm not so sure it's come from the magnesium. I think it's come from this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There are two isotopes mm. of palladium that I think with deuterium they can go to. Is it uh, silver 109? You've got 107, 109, right? Mm -hmm. And this this is a uh, a finding in the low energy nuclear reaction field that they observe silver production. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So th this I think is our first close to being a valid mm -hmm. result. Mm -hmm. We know that it has strange radiation, mm -hmm. so we know that it can in my view, transmute elements. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. I, gold would be interesting if we saw that, but I think that's unlikely. I think when you do future tests, do not bother with nickel, do not bother with iron, do not bother with phosphorus. Probably, depending on if you've used a copper layer before you've laid the palladium, I don't know how you've done the plating. But if it's, I don't know how it's plated. Mm -hmm. If there's a copper layer underneath the palladium to, to attach it to the metal, mm -hmm. then, then forget copper. But this is a result that is seen in, in Lena experiments. Mm. And if you're seeing it here, which it, it would appear that, certainly to my eye, um, silver. It, it looks like you have silver, and, and this is a kind of expected result you would see in Lena. Mm. So I, I, think, I think this is a, a, approaching a positive. Mm. Maybe you would like to continue with the magnesium mm -hmm. test for longer. I, I have one reservation, and that is that there is again a slight coloration which is green, and whether the green mixing with this is giving us a slight, you know, but this could be a transmutation which is expected from palladium. Um, which is not something that you should have as a contaminant in there. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know. So in the magnesium chloride uh, deuterium light water vibration test that ran overnight, uh, the uh, researcher here uh, tested for ions, and the ones that came out positive in the video. Uh, were iron and silver. Now the interesting thing for me is uh, deuterium palladium reaction is a known uh, observation in the field of Lena, so I suspected actually expensive palladium was being trans transmuted into um, uh, deuterium. Sorry, expensive palladium was being transmuted into silver uh, via the deuterium. Uh, but I thought I'd check with Alexander Parkamov's uh, um, 
reaction tables uh, with uh, neutrino processes at uh, nanosoft.cz. Um, thank you to Philip Power uh, who uh, put this together for us. And uh, I put in that I wanted uh, element one to be uh, magnesium and the output element to be any isotope of iron and to see what the mo most energetically favorable reactions would come out of that. And lo and behold, uh, the most first top of the list is magnesium 25 uh, plus chlorine. So we had magnesium chloride uh, goes to helium 4 plus iron 56. So that's uh, with an output of 15.98 uh, megaelectron volts. So that there is the most likely outcome. We observed iron. Now it's not the only one uh, we have. Uh, uh, if you take magnesium 25 and chlorine 37, you get iron 58. And if you take, um, uh, where is it, uh, magnesium 25 and, and chlorine 37, you get another outcome with uh, helium 3 here and another isotope. Uh, uh, okay, no. <laughs> so you just have iron here, iron here iron here so there's there's a couple of different options there iron 57 down the bottom so that's the one I was looking at anyway you can run this query yourself at uh, nanosoft.co.cz and put in the query and and see the outcome now to have a look at the palladium um, uh, we have seen uh, that if you had helium 3 which they don't have uh, but here's lithium but then we go down the list and the first reaction that involves uh, uh, Deuterium is with palladium 106, and that goes to silver 107. And uh, there's another reaction here with deuterium with uh, palladium 106, goes to hydrogen and, and 107. Sorry, sorry, we have, uh, get this right. Deuterium plus palladium 108 goes to uh, silver 109, and deuterium plus palladium 106 goes to uh, silver uh, 107. Uh, again, you can put in this query uh, element 2 is palladium, element 4 is silver. And what they have given us is uh, some uh, samples here, the magnesium chloride tests uh, plus, uh, 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 for 20 hours. And uh, we are going to uh, look for isotopes uh, and see if there's any non-natural isotopes in the silver. But there shouldn't be silver in there and there seem to be very clearly uh, silver observed. Now the interesting thing is um, uh, if they had uh, used uh, lithium, say in the form of lithium carbonate, uh, and put that in there, it should produce uh, palladium, uh, I'm sorry, work with palladium to produce silver, and uh, with a much more energetic uh, and favorable outcome. So uh, this is a suggestion we've made, is that they use lithium, and obviously lithium carbonate is far, far cheaper than deuterium, and so um, they are looking to get some lithium carbonate, and potentially that will uh, have a higher yield, a faster reaction. Um, and also we suggested um, using, uh, rather than coating these plates with palladium, which is expensive, uh, to take the steel plate and coat it with copper, which is cheap, and then use uh, lithium also, and uh, that will have uh, a favorable outcome uh, to produce uh, zinc, um, and you can do those reaction tables yourself. Um, and uh, I think that would be a much easier test, uh, a cheaper test to conduct. But I think uh, this morning um, we have confirmation that the cavitation and the EVOs are working together to produce silver uh, and iron uh, in this reaction. So it looks like, uh, at least at first glance, there is a confirmation that this device does do transmutation. Now there's some discussion that um, they would like us to have a couple of these units so uh, hopefully uh, one can be shipped to Allen in, in California and I can take one in Europe and uh, we can run tests and that will hopefully give us the ability to produce plates with um, strange radiation on. Uh, obviously there will be other expenses to do that work but uh, um, you know if we can produce sufficient numbers of these we can characterize strange radiation very clearly. Uh, we can use I like this idea of these iron tests, um, so you can get these silver iron tests and we could uh, ensure that there was no contamination of any sort in there. But, you know, when you start with, and there's no silver in the starting material, uh, and you see silver, they didn't know that this reaction is uh, possible. 
um, in this way. They also didn't know that the most likely outcome of an interaction between a, 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 a magnesium isotope and a chlorine isotope would be the most favorable reaction to produce um, the common uh, iron isotope. So I doubted it when I saw it, and you see that in the first part of this video. Uh, I doubted it uh, because I thought, well, the iron could be coming from the, the steel, um, but then the nickel was negative as far as I understand it. But uh, this, this implies that this really is doing transmutation. And like I say, with the cavitation and the strange radiation, it's got everything it needs uh, to do. There's another thing that I want to talk about the beauty of this system. I think I mentioned it last night, but uh, if it is a resonance phenomena, uh, to produce a particular element isotope with the mixture of elements that you put into your reactor. The beauty of this system, you've got a parameter sweep across the width of the fin and across the depth. And so if there's a particular energy concentration due to the pressure intensity at the cavitation node that is required to specifically initiate this transmutation, um, other systems that, that have been employed uh, you would need to know what that particular resonant, uh, actual resonance was to, to do the transmutation with your input ingredients. In this system, you've got a huge parameter sweeping automatically built in. Um, and uh, this means that your chances of uh, achieving transmutation with a set of in, uh, inputs is, in my opinion, far higher. And uh, um, that's all I've got to say on that at the moment. But um, it really looks like we have a winner here. Um, uh, to uh, study strange radiation. And, and I was discussing with George, who's sitting patiently beside me here, and uh, he was talking about, you know, you can use Tesla coils or high voltage discharges. And these uh, uh, methods have been used uh, uh, over the history of Lena. Uh, my argument to him was essentially, you know, <laughs> people get afraid of very high voltages and with good reason. And uh, you know, this system has no high voltages. I mean, everyone in their life, by the time they're very young, has switched on an electric motor, which is properly sealed and meant to run for decades. And the the idea of flapping about in water is not that scary. Um, yes, we demonstrated it can get up to 79 dB. Um, so it's quite loud, but these things are quite easy to house. And as we're getting better understanding of shielding strange radiation, um, you, you know, and the, the, the strange radiation is not sort of like uh, uh, echo type intense. This is a really good study tool. So what do you think, George? Uh, actually, it does uh, uh, a good job in providing high density plasma for a very brief period uh, during the time the bubbles are collapsing. So this is a a relatively safe way of, of creating a very high density plasma on the cheap. So this is definitely an advantage of this technology. And the other thing is that you, you can plate your material with different elements. You, you know what you're putting into your material. And uh, with the tools um, that we've managed to create with the, the sharing of data by Alexander Parkamov and the work of uh, Dennis Wimote and, and uh, Lamotte and, uh, and Philip Power, um, you can actually uh, explore options for experiments uh, uh, and see the transmutation outcomes. And I, I do like the innovation I've seen here that I wasn't aware of, where you can get these single iron in liquid uh, analysis techniques. This means that you can have a, a chance of verifying that you're doing some transmutation without having to uh, go under the SEM or uh, book a session with uh, ICPMS or something, at least to, to give you an idea if you're going in the, the right direction. So uh, I think th that innovation here is is also a very uh, um, good tool uh, for the Lena researcher. So I, I think I, I, I was saying uh, to show, here's show, hello show, he's very shy. He's shy show, hello shy show. Uh, <laughs> he... Um, uh, I think that I have to thank him for bringing us here because uh, these last few days we, we've got everything in sequence uh, that we could have possibly hoped for. Um, really, in, in three days has been a big win on it every day and uh, I couldn't have expected it to go better. So thank you all those uh, that made this possible and uh, uh, I look forward to uh, seeing you in the next video.